If you've seen magic on TV in the past five years, you've likely seen the handiwork of Brent Braun without even knowing it. He's a behind the scenes master, a solver of impossible problems, a Swiss army knife innovator who can take anything and help you make it better. So when I think, you're, you've seen the film Pulp Fiction. Of course. Yeah. Remember the wolf who they call in, is that what he's called, the yeah. character? Yeah, I think they, so. They accidentally shoot the guy in the car and they need someone to help. To they call the up. guy who just helps solve problems. Right, right, right. That's how I think of you, like in the magic world. Sure. Is that, I mean, people call you with all sorts of different kinds of requests from, I'm going on TV and I need some magic to do, or I, I have a special, or, I mean. Yeah, all the way down from, I'm, I already know what trick I'm going. Uh, on TV with, I just need to know what to say. Right, punch it I need up to know how bit. to stand. Yeah. I need to know how to move. So, and that's what we do. All, all, all of those things, even to the part of like, uh, you're going to become a magician and you need to set up a, an S corporation and we'll help you set up an S corporation. It's really all the sides of business and all the sides of magic and anything that, that even product releases, right? Because, because I sort of have this connection with Penguin. Sure. So I can help consult on product releases and, and make sure that you're sort of getting what you deserve out of it right. and also making sure that it's a good product. So sort of all that across the board. You know, one of the reasons that's really important is is it's really hard to get good criticism as a performer because everybody thinks what you're hoping to hear is how great you are. Sure. And you want the audience to tell you how great you are. Sure. You want everyone who actually cares about you to do anything they possibly can sure. to make the sure. show better. Sure, sure, sure. So, your best today can get better, right. right? So when I bring out the best of you and we sit down and we work on the show and the show's phenomenal and at the end of the night the audience loves it and they're on fire and they leave, my job is to call you the next morning and talk about what we can do to go one step further. That's great. What we can do to, and it, and it sucks, right? It's, it's tough. I've got to sort of let the timing, you know, we have to get over the adrenaline rush of what happened last night before we had that discussion. Right. But it's, it's extremely important because it's the only way to continue to move forward because I believe that if you stop working on the show and that we write it for a year and then you do that show for 20 years, in 20 years it's not going to be as fresh as it was. Right yesterday. Right. What is, uh, what's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? Oh, wow. I have to say, um, I saw Ricky Jay and his 52 assistants live. Um, it had been retired, so I had a VHS of the, of the HBO special that had been worn out because I'd watched it 3,000 times. And then there was a theater in uh, D.C. doing a fundraiser. So Ricky came out and did the show one last time wow. after he'd been retired for eight years. So I dropped everything in my life and I drove the eight hours to DC to see the show. I picked up a friend of mine and we made it happen. And he does in the show, he sticks uh, um, playing cards, throws them into a watermelon, right? It's going to sound weird that I'm telling you that this is the most, because it's not a magic trick. Right. But he's sticking cards into a watermelon, uh, into the fleshy red interior of the watermelon. And then at the end, sort of, he turns it around and he's going to stick one into the thick side of the watermelon. And at this point, he has 25 cards left. Right. He hasn't done the show in five years. He's older. He's sort of a little bit heavier. And he starts throwing the cards at the watermelon hard, like baseball hard. And they're bouncing off. And they're bouncing off. And he's getting less and less cards. And then he ends up with one card left and it sticks. Wow. Oh, man. And, and I want to believe <laughs> that it's a trick. I want to believe that there's a method. Right. I want to believe that that card is just full of razor blades and lead, right. and that it's always going to stick, and that the other ones are built in such a way that they'll never stick. Right. But I can't believe that. Yeah. I have to believe that I was in it, and, and he's breathing heavy, Nate. Like, there's a point when I feel like I might watch Ricky J die on stage tonight because he's breathing heavy and he's chucking 20 cards at a watermelon as hard as he can for a minute and a half. And then he has a single card left. He doesn't say anything about it. He doesn't go like, this is the last shot. I hope it sticks. Right, because everybody knows. This. He just throws the damn card and it sticks. Wow. And I feel all the air in the room get sucked out. And for three to four seconds, it's just silent and then poof, it explodes, <laughs> and it, it explodes. And, I, and it's weird, 
that that's the sort of the piece because there should be some really clever, impossible thing that happened, right? right? When you just state the facts of the situation, <laughs> this guy threw a playing card into a watermelon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, right? that's a very, that doesn't I saw do a guy justice. stick a card in a playing watermelon. Yeah, yeah that's but the that's, most magical thing. See, that's, that's like an example. That's representative of all of magic, right? It's you're taking something small and flimsy and insubstantial and turning it into the experience of astonishment. Do you have time to go get lunch before we? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, of course. Okay. Are you always inventing new magic? Um, I have a list of, of 20, 17 now, I think, 17 plots yeah. that I've been working on for 15 years that will eventually be sharp enough that I'll be happy with them. Right. Very similar to the card at number, very similar to the Torn Restore card, very yeah. similar to my uh, two card transposition. Yeah. Things where I feel like those are three that I've just clutched. Yeah. I beat them up so hard and I've thrown them around and used them and abused them and thought about them for so long that they've sort of gotten there. Right. And there are another sort of 17 plots on that list. And I'm guessing some of those are in various stages of development. Some of them you probably haven't touched yet, and they're just sort of, it's like you push them forward when you can. Most of them I've, I've sort of uh, touched in some way, because it's been 15 years I've been, I've been staring at this list of, of 22 I started with. Um, but it can be depressing when you look at the list instead of the, the, the short list. When you look at the short list and I look at the, the accomplishments, right. it's worth the time. Right. But when I look back at the 20 years and 17 tricks left to go on a 22 year, I can't finish these before I die. Right. And that's sort of depressing. Um, you know what would be worse? Finishing the list. <laughs> right, right, of course. Then where do you go? What do you do the next day, right? That's, that's the perfect response. Before we end, an update. For maybe the first time in my life, I am ahead of schedule, too far ahead of schedule. Apparently it doesn't take three weeks to drive across the country. So I'm headed south, first to Kentucky, then through New Orleans to Texas, and then on, inevitably, to Las Vegas. See you tomorrow.